do speaker cables really make that much of a difference? That's the question we're going to be answering in today's Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisalo with Audioholics, and you know, I've been at this a long time. You've seen tons of videos from me talking about speaker cables, debunking the myths about all the different exotic cables and the manufacturer claims. I've taken some heat for it. Today, I come armed, armed to the teeth with real measurements. And before I get into that information with you, I want you guys to understand the amount of effort that we put behind the scenes here. In doing what we do at Audioholics, there's very few companies, very few publications that dedicate this many resources into giving you the real science of audio. So to start with, I have some very sophisticated equipment. I've got the Wayne Kerr. I know the, the name sounds funny, but it is called Wayne Kerr. I have their 4300 LCR meter, which can measure the resistance, the inductance and capacitance of cables very accurately. This is very precise equipment, much more precise than someone using a voltmeter or any, or you know, just a regular uh, handheld LCR meter. These things are really accurate. I use this to measure the speaker cables or to measure interconnects, so I could get all the electrical data of the cable, and then I could build models on that and show you guys what this all means. In addition to that, I have the Audio Precision APX 585 HDMI eight channel analyzer. This is a $40,000 analyzer. It measures distortion, signal to noise ratio, frequency response. I can measure amplifiers, eight channels, <clears throat> excuse me, eight channels at a time. I can measure DVD players, Blu-ray players, any source device, you name it. It has HDMI, Toslink, digital AES outputs, everything under the sun I could do with this. This is very precise test equipment. This particular piece alone could measure you know, with resolution up to 120, 130 dB, well beyond most audio equipment, even the most expensive audio equipment out there. This does it. I have the tools here. This is how we do the analysis. So I decided to be kind of a good topic to do cables. So I took three speaker cables I had laying around. I have, they're all 10 feet in length. I made the assumption that if an audiophile is setting up a two-channel system, they want to keep their cables as short as they can, right? Most audiophiles put their amplifiers behind the speakers. They want to minimize cable lengths. So I made the assumption that someone that's really serious about two-channel audio is going to set up speakers with their cables no more than about 10 feet in length. Obviously, if you go higher in length in cables, then there's potentially more losses, and we'll get into that. So in this test, I took regular 10-gauge speaker cable that I have from Blue Jeans. I took generic 14 gauge cable I had laying around for whatever I did at the time. It was exactly 10 feet. And then I took the Kimber 8 uh, TC speaker cables. And as you guys know, these are my favorite speaker cables. I know they're expensive. I know that, you know, I talk a lot about cables and how you don't really need to spend a lot of money on cables. But if you do spend money on cables, at least make it that it's a good cable, something that measures better than standard 10 or 12 gauge zip cord. And that's exactly what the Kimber cable does. In fact, the Kimber ATC is probably the best measuring speaker cable that I've measured to date. That's why I still use it in my reference systems. I love the way it looks. I like the audio jewelry aspect of it, but we're gonna get into whether or not there are real differences even if they're measurable on my LCR meter, does it translate to actual differences that are gonna to get to your speakers and then uh, eventually get to your ears? So I wanna give you some of the electrical properties of all these cables. If you look at the ATC and the, 5T, the 5T00UP is the 10 gauge from Blue Jeans cable, that's just what they call it. I probably should have put 10 gauge to be more clear. And then the generic 14 gauge here, and I just plotted uh, when I measured the DC resistance of these cables, I found exactly that. The ATC cable actually measures around nine gauge. The blue jeans 10 gauge measures a 10 gauge of DCR and the 14 gauge is at 14 gauge. So there you know, you, we know that the resistance of these cables is what they are specced. So the first thing I look at is AC resistance. And people probably don't understand what that means. What do you mean by AC resistance? 
Well, when you're dealing with a piece of wire and you're transmitting frequencies through it, your audio band or whatever, you know, obviously you're going from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz to get the full band. As you go higher in frequency, what happens with a piece of wire is you get less and less current going through the entire, the entire strands of the wire and they go more towards the surface of the wire and that's called the skin effect. There's a skin depth associated with it. And usually we don't really concern ourselves with skin effect at audio frequencies because it's really not that big of an issue. But I plotted that here anyways. I went from 100 hertz out to uh, 100 kilohertz. And you can see the 14 gauge speaker cable. It's pretty flat up until about 10 kilohertz. And then uh, as you go up in frequency, um, the skin effect is causing a rise in AC resistance not a huge rise yet. I mean, it's still, you know, within 20 kilohertz, it's fine. It's a very minute amount of difference. Then you look at the 10 gauge, it has kind of the same slope, very similar characteristics. Now the Kimber ATC, of course, is a braided cable and they use multiple strands. Obviously it actually has less skin effect problem within hundred kilohertz than the other cables. So you are getting some engineering involved in this cable you are getting better measurable performance here this cable is actually reducing the skin effect within the audio band so kudos to kimber for actually doing something beneficial with their cable next up i look at the inductance of the cables again here we have um, the atc which is the lowest inductance cable then we have the 10 gauge which is the next lowest inductance and then the cheap 14 gauge is you know 0.2 microhenries per foot now that's still pretty low, but the idea behind inductance is you don't want to have very high inductance because if you have a lot of inductance and you plug it into your speaker, you could act like a, like a low pass filter and you could, you know, you could knock off some of the high frequencies. So obviously here, the Kimber is, is the lowest inductance cable of the bunch, pretty significant, you know, four or five times lower than the 10 gauge here. Then you go to capacitance. See, anytime you lower inductance, you're going to increase capacitance. It's all about the conductor spacing that determines the relationship between uh, inductance and capacitance. So here, the uh, Kimber cable is the highest capacitance. It's like 100 picofarads per foot, whereas the uh, 14 gauge and the 12 gauge are pretty similar. They're hovering between 20 and 30 uh, picofarads per foot. So proportionally less capacitance because they have proportionally higher inductance. And what do you care about in capacitance? Capacitance is not as important as the inductance, although you don't want to have massive amounts of capacitance because that could cause an amplifier to oscillate if it's not a very good amplifier, or it could cause some frequency peaking on very wide bandwidth amplifiers. But generally speaking, the most important metric in speaker cables, as I've always said, is resistance followed by inductance followed by capacitance. So I want to show you what I did next. I got my setup here. I actually am in the process of measuring the Denon uh, PMA A110 integrated amplifier. It's a 110th anniversary integrated amplifier. This is a very good amplifier. It's a very clean amplifier. It's rated at 80 watts a channel in 8 ohms, 160 watts a channel of 4 ohms. I've actually been able to confirm and actually have some of that power exceed it at 4 ohm loads. It was doing a little bit more than 160. It's a very good quality amplifier. And you can see in the background, I have the Rebel F328BE speakers. So the integrated amp here is 3,500 bucks. The speakers are 16 grand a pair. The reason why I'm telling you prices is I know a lot of audio files will always come and say, you don't have revealing enough equipment or you're, you know, you can't hear the difference in speaker cables because your amp's not good enough or your speakers are not good enough. I think few people can argue the fact that these are pretty much benchmark products that I have here. So I've got benchmark amplification, benchmark um, speakers, benchmark test gear, and nobody can argue that the Kimber 8TC is a very good cable. So here's what I want to show you. The first test I ran is I took the audio precision. I plugged it into the Denon amplifier and an 8 ohm load, and I measured the frequency response at the 8 ohm load driving different cables. And here we are. We measured from uh, 10 hertz out to actually full bandwidth. We, we, I went out to about 80 kilohertz. So you can see here there's a slight difference in level between the different traces. So we have the top trace, which is the ATC, the blue trace, which is the Kimber, versus the lowest trace, 
which is the 14 gauge cable. Now, these are very minute differences. If you look at the scale here, I'm only going, my vertical scale is only about 2 dB. I had to really zoom in on this just to see anything. If you use a 40 dB scale, this looks transparent. You don't see a difference at all. I had to really zoom in here. We're talking about 0 0.06 decibel difference between the two cables running between the ATC, which is a 9 gauge cable versus the 14 gauge cable. 0 0.06 dB difference at 20 kilohertz, the limits of human hearing. The best anyone can actually hear and perceive differences in sound is about maybe a half a dB, maybe two tenths of a dB at most. It really depends on how loud the signal is and what, what frequency it is and how good your hearing is. Nobody can perceive a difference of 0 0.06 3 dB. That's just completely absurd. It's within the tolerance of electronics for even to channel to channel to vary that much, even on the best equipment. So we're talking about 0 0.063 b 3 dB difference. And you can see I also plotted distortion here to see if there was any weirdness going on. And again, this is very perceptually low distortion. If you look at the comparisons here, I zoom in on it. We're talking about a 0 0.006% difference between the Kimber cable and the 10 gauge cable. Barely measurable difference in distortion caused by the reactance of the cable and the amplifier and the and the load. Very in you know something that's not perceptual. It could be argued that the audibility of the distortion is around uh, you know 0.1% and it depends again on the signal. But nobody's going to argue that you can hear 0.006% THD difference just between these two cables. So I know what people are going to say now. The cable guys are out there. They're going to say, oh, you can't just test it into an 8 ohm load. You have to test it into a loudspeaker because a loudspeaker is reactive. It's going to interact with the cable differently. The only way you're going to be able to test if there's a difference in cables is if you plug it into a loudspeaker and then measure that. Well, I did do that. And as you can see here, I have the Revel F328BEs. I have the Kimber cables plugged in and I did the 10 gauge. I varied all the different cables. You can see up close here, there's my test leads. There's the Kimber 8TCs. And here we go. I measured it again. And what are we seeing again? Look at the difference. 0 0.06 dB difference between the best and the worst cable. What I found on the 8 ohm load tracked with an actual loudspeaker. And the Revel loudspeaker is a complex load impedance. It's actually probably closer to a 4 ohm load. So the differences should be even more pronounced. But look at that. The distortion is pretty much the same. You get a little waviness here, but they're all the curves shape follow it. It doesn't matter. This is because of the reactive load of the loudspeaker driving on an amplifier, but the shape is the same on all the different speaker cables. So again, we're talking about perceptual differences that barely my test equipment can pick up and certainly your ears cannot pick up. So what do you think about that, guys? I actually took cables. I measured them on a loudspeaker. I measured them on an 8 ohm load. I showed you at the source what the differences would be with cables. And this is all stuff that's easy to simulate because if you look at the differences here and you see that the 14 gauge cable has a lower level in general, that's because of insertion loss because the cable has higher resistance. It's, it sets up a voltage divider and that loss is caused by the resistance. The power is dropping in that cable and it's dropping the SPL. And we're talking again, it's very imperceptual. It's, you know, 0 0.06 dB is not much. And obviously if the cable lengths get longer, then your losses are going to proportionally get longer for all the cables. So what I did for 10 feet is pretty relevant to if you did all this again for 30 foot cables. What I'm trying to tell you guys is the perceptual differences in cables is not because of the actual measurements when you plug them into a speaker. It probably has a lot more to do with placebo effect. This is why it's so important to do controlled blind listening tests and to not just, don't just trust yourself. If you swap out a cable and, you, and someone is preconditioning you, telling you you're going to hear chocolatey mid-range and the perception that you're airy, it's going to be more airy, 
Things are going to open up. Flowers are going to bloom. Just realize they're preconditioning you to hear that. That has a much bigger effect than a 0 0.06 dB difference that I just measured here. And if you really want to make changes in the sound of your system, it's not going to be through cables. It's going to be through room. It's going to be through room acoustics and positional EQ of your speakers. Getting your speaker set up right, just moving your head a couple of inches will change the frequency response far more than whatever cable you're going to use. And I know there's going to be a lot of resistance on this. I know people are going to be, there's going to be some cable companies that are going to come out and, and just, you know, they're going to want to poo-poo this whole test. But the reality is the proof is on them. The burden of proof is on them. I'm showing you here with measurements that there's almost no difference at all with the very best cable versus a very generic cable you can get at Home Depot. So I hope that sums it up. Why don't you guys give me a comment down below? Let me know what speaker cables you're using. Let me know if you bought into the magic and you were hoping for more. And I'm not disparaging anyone for spending a lot of money on cables. I like the fancy stuff. I love the Kimber stuff. The Kimber stuff is beautifully crafted. There's many speaker cable companies that make great crafted products. You know, you got Wireworld, you got all these different companies, Nordost, beautiful cables. But the reality is you're buying jewelry because at very best, they measure a little bit better than 10 gauge cable, but the actual output difference on your speaker is pretty negligible. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Please make sure you hit that bell notification, do the thumbs up on this, give me some comments down below. If you don't hit that bell notification, you're not gonna get notices when I do these kind of videos. And I really would like your support. I really appreciate your support. The fact that you guys have been sticking with me for so long and giving me a platform to get my voice out, to get the science out in audio. We need more science in audio, and I'm hoping others follow suit with this as well. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audio halls. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics, or if you just want to do a consult, I could set something up like that for you as well. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.